Go to the stage navigator and click on the right arrow to start the refined stage. The refined stage brings us to a more advanced type of simulation. Once the preferred design is chosen, we can perform a high fidelity simulation to verify that the model will perform as expected. The simulation boundary conditions and the materials are directly transferred from the explore stage, so we do not need to set them up again. For this simple example, all we need to do is to click on the solve button. As the solution progresses and the green color covers half of the hexagon, we can start visualizing the computational grid or mesh by clicking on the button right next to the solve button. As you can see, the geometry is divided into small cells the solver calculates the solution in each one of these cells to give us the final results. This mesh is obtained using the default settings under the Mesh Global Settings in the Fidelity panel. If you look in detail, you can see that there are more cells near the round edges and faces to better capture the curvature of the geometry. By now, the solution should be complete. As you can see, the maximum temperature is very close to the one we have seen in the Explore stage. The difference is very limited. The temperature distribution and the heatsink is very similar too. Let's now see what the effect is of increasing the fidelity to the max value in the bar of the stage navigator. As you start the solution and the mesh gets displayed, you can see that now we have smaller cells, hence a finer mesh. However, for this simple case, the increased fidelity reflects into a slightly longer calculation for just a tiny change of the max temperature. It is always good to balance the mesh refinement to the level of accuracy that is sufficient for your study. The maximum temperature that the CPUs reach is above 200 degrees Celsius. Even if the heat sink helps drastically reduce the temperature of the CPUs, this is still not sufficient. The main reason is that we are relying on simple natural convection that is not sufficient to extract enough heat from the CPUs. A forced convection system is needed, like a computer fan. The moving air will increase the heat transfer and help cool down further the CPUs. In the next lessons, we will explore this. This concludes the exercise on thermal analysis of a heat sink.